This is This Week in Perspective with me, Adam Simbe. On the 9th of December, Tanzanians commemorated the 56 years of independence of Tanganyika with fanfare and military parade in the Doma, presided over by President Joseph Pombe Magufuli. Obviously, 56 years is a long time and it is always worth rejoicing. As we continue to mark the day, we should always ask ourselves where we were then, where we are today, and where we will be beyond the 56 years. To review the 56 years and discuss what the country has achieved so far, or not achieved in 56 years with me, are on my right, Joseph Mwamnyange, who is a media consultant. Next is uh, Dr. Bohera Lunagelo, who is an economic and social analyst. On my left, uh, Professor Onrata Mushi from in Open University of Tanzania. Last but not least, Muhidini Yuma Shangwe, Shangwe mm -hmm. a political scientist from University of Dagestan. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, apologies for starting late, but to be as it may, I hope we'll be able to, 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 to do justice to the topic today. So welcome again. Dr. Nagel, was there any justification for Tanzania to celebrate 56 years of independence of Tanganyika? Yeah, collectively, I guess yes. Individually, also yes, because... I think for me, when we got independence, I was seven years old. So you can imagine all those years. Uh, I remember the day we got independence. Actually, we were hidden in our village. We were told all the children not to go out because we were not quite sure uh, the reaction of the colonialists, the white people, the British. Uh, some, some rumors that they may take all the children uh, with them to UK. Uh, so and we are not. We are not very keen. Which would have been blessing. No, we are not very keen because we are not sure what we are going to eat if we are taken there. We are used to Ugali and Maharag, you know, we don't know what we are going to eat. But, but I think as, 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 as a nation, uh, we, we, we are proud um, uh, because we have had, you know, the, the in, in independence uh, gave rise what some, some sociologists call a nation, nation building project which basically has two aspects. Uh, one is an uh, economic uh, development uh, project. And uh, the other one, uh, which I think that's the one which came first when we, we, we immediately we got independence, was that of uh, what we call a nation cohesion, nation building, uh, bring people together. You remember we have more than 120 plus tribes. Yes. Uh, bring, continue to bring them together uh, up to now. I think is, 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 is a plus, yeah. but I think I'll leave to Muhidini to elaborate on that, yeah, the, political <laughs> but, <laughs> the political scientists. But for me, the economic uh, agenda, the economic development agenda is the one which I see is, uh, which uh, we, we should be proud as Tanzanians. Uh, and I could say that uh, uh, despite some hitches here and there as, as we moved to, uh, through the, the 56 years, yes. uh, of, of course, we had had uh, some setbacks related to uh, the collapse of the SISO industry. You know, Tanzania actually was a dominant uh, main producer of SISO. So most of our, 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 our economy was a SISO economy. We even used to give loans to the British. Uh, <laughs> yes, we, we, we were strong economically. Because the collapse of that, of course, had, had some, um, uh, some negative aspects in, in our economy. Then we had, of course, the, some drought, the oil crisis in the, in the, in the early 70s. Uh, and then we had the Idi Amini war, I think. All those some, somehow uh, played some negative uh, pulled us down, we could say, including the villagerization project itself, which yes. was uh, meant well in terms of uh, 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 fighting uh, uh, poverty, uh, but uh, it, it was a failed project, you could say. Uh, but uh, after that, we managed to, to pull ourselves, uh, despite all those setbacks as a country, we, 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 we have managed really to, 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 to have some strides, posit positive strides, and they have maybe three or four examples, some evidence to show that we, how we have done. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, uh, generally the, the economic, the general economic development, uh, uh, like I was telling Mwedin that uh, during when I was young, in, in the, in, 
from 50s and after we got independence up to 1970s, uh, mid 70s, the economy actually was divided into two parts. Uh, you, 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 we had uh, one part of the, of the country uh, which was uh, the main source of any monetary, is a monetarized economy, while the other one was still uh, we could call a primitive economy. Uh, even some some jokes that some part of Tanzania were called Tanganyika. Eh, if you go, so you, we had some marginalized parts of the country, and and uh, some more advanced parts of, of of the country. One of the biggest achievement actually is the closing of that gap. Uh, bet between uh, uh, the marginalized regions uh, and those who are uh, more advanced. Uh, Professor Mushi, you are looking at be very, uh, for, for us, in, for us we, coming from the south, if you wanted to get money to pay a uh, poll tax called Yakichwa by, by then, you had actually to travel to Tanga or to Morogoro or to Kilimanjaro, stay there for three or four or six months to get money for you to go back. So you leave the family alone back home. So, and so the southern regions were taken as labor pool regions to, pro, to, to provide uh, laborers to the SISO economy, to the, to the, the coffee economy in, in the north, uh, Manamba. So the, 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 the Manamba uh, economy was, but now it's no longer there. Now you have one of the, the, the successes that each region, each, all the regions have some economic uh, opportunities. If you, in Kigoma, you can, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll have Palm and uh, Daga. If you go to Lindi, Mtwara, you have Keshu. You, you, you go to uh, Jombe, you have uh, Timba, you have D, you have uh, Maize, of course, Rukwa. So each, in, in, in Mwanza, you, you have Kota. You and Songwe. You have Maize and Coffee. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so, the, the grain baskets. So, so you could see the, 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 could say there's an equilibrium uh, being built. Of course, you still have Dar es Salaam. Uh, if you look at uh, the most recent two reports pr produced by Economic and Social Research Foundation uh, on, 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 on Tanzania generally, uh, you, you could see that uh, uh, still Dar es Salaam is the one which is still leading in terms of uh, economic prosperity and, 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 and the measured contribution by, to the and the economy economy. contribution. But followed now uh, by regions, uh, to your surprise, regions which used to be in Manamba producing economies like in Jombe, Mbea, uh, are competing with, of course, in Mwanza and Arusha. They are the t among the top ten. Uh, after the Islam. So you have Njombe, Mbea, so, uh, and, and Ruvuma, and of course in Mwanza, uh, which before were marginalized regions, now they, they are among the top league in terms of economic development. But of course if you say that, the common man will say, what about us? Uh, the evidence which was produced by the National Bureau of Statistics recently shows that also in terms of well-being of the ordinary person, people, uh, if you measure in terms of uh, quality of living, the quality of housing, um, when you are in the 60s, maybe you could have maybe 5 to 10 percent of the houses uh, roofed with the corrugated iron sheets. Uh, but now, uh, two, three or four years ago, the last census was actually 65 percent uh, uh, houses are corrugated. But the, also the life, in lifespan the in the rural areas. We're talking about rural areas. But you talk about the lifespan. Uh, we, we started with 35 years, 35 to 40 years during in the 60s, 70s, uh, lifespan, uh, lifespan of uh, average lifespan for Tanzanians. Now we are see, about 61. Uh, so a child born this year? Yeah, ex expected years. minimum is about 61 years. Expected While minimum. during, during the, the first 10 years of independence, it was... If you go beyond 35, you, you, they say you are living on borrowed time because you are supposed to die at 35. So, so I can see those are uh, really uh, the, 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 some of the, 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 the uh, success indicators generally. There are many, and, but, but, but of course for, for, for us to, to, to manage to do that, um, one of the biggest uh, achievements uh, based on those uh, failure factors, uh, the oil crisis, the, the drought, the Idi Amin war, at one time inflation rate was about between 35 and 39. Uh, so we have managed to, to, to tame it down 
to for the past 15 years we were except for 2011 2012 uh, is Average is about five percent. It's a single digit inflation. That's the one 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 of the uh, the biggest achievements. Again, the the, the GDP per capita, uh, if you divided our wealth per person from two fifty dollars per person, three hundred dollars. Now we are, uh, I think, above one thousand, above nine hundred dollars per person. So so you, you could you could see, and of course, if if you travel, and for us we are like some we go a lot in the village. Um, up to 1990s, uh, 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 1980s, I remember when uh, 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 Dr. Uh, uh, Salim, Mohammed Salim, when he came from United Nations, I think he was made minister for, for, for uh, a minister. He traveled to Mutwara. He cried seeing people actually, some of that half naked, barefooted. Now you, you, you travel all the, over the country, people with shoes. With, uh, there's no one who, who is walking naked. And, and, and that phenomenon of naked people, barefooted people, was there even up to 1980s. You can imagine. He's actually wearing the, the cotton black material. Yeah, yes, it's a kaniki, the kaniki type of. So, so, so you could see all those changes. You, you don't want to, to mention other indicators. So, right. so generally, to me, sorry, I've taken a bit long because. For me, it's, it's, it's a special project as an individual from seven years, when I was seven years, to have yeah, experience to see up to now, then I can see we have, it's a huge achievement, and personally. That, I, I that see. is the very justification yes. that why you individually <laughs> yeah. have this yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is your take on this? Yeah, actually, he has presented it very, very craftily in the sense that he's covered quite a broad area. We all need to celebrate because a lot has happened. I, I was there, I was very young by that time when we got our independence. And I see myself growing up to become what I am because of the so many things that have taken place. What he's been talking about relates so much to the education that people have gotten ever since we got our independence, particularly after the Arusha declaration and Limuya Kujitekemea, self-reliance, and also the quota system that enabled each, each region to have secondary schools, to ensure that each, each region gets a secondary school, which will get some people to go up to higher education. So education has expanded dramatically. Uh, of course, there are some challenges that we have encountered that we will continue to encounter. Uh, but the education system has has contributed to the achievements that we have had. Because it's through education that all other sectors have been receiving uh, manpower to manage, to work in, with, to improve, to innovate. Uh, the infrastructure. Uh, with the quota system, if I was to travel from Kilimanjaro to study in Mwanza, where, it, uh, where I, I did my secondary school, I, I needed infrastructure. But by that time, we only had to, 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 to use the, tra the, the train. It would take three, three days on the way to Mwanza. But these days... From Kilimanjaro. From Kilimanjaro. And we have to go through Pugu, through all those, you know, it would take us a very long time. Uh, the advantage we had was that the government then was paying for whatever we mm. were using. Warrant, warrant, yeah, warrant. yeah. Mm. yeah. But uh, that freedom, uh, I think uh, uh, His Excellency President Magufuli is bringing it back somehow. Uh, and during that time, we had these uh, local cooperati cooperative unions which were adding to what the government was doing. But this was limited to those pros prosperous regions, like you were saying, where there were coffee, where there was uh, other productive... Uh, the famous one. Yeah, yeah. Came yeah came but then there was a time problems. when they really fainted. You know, they, they, they lagged behind. Uh, I think those are the things that we would need to be improved, to be revisited, and probably reintroduced in our regions. 
uh, so that we, we move. So we, we also, after independence, I think we got this kind of confidence for those who had undergone the education system, those who have had jobs and they were employed, they had the, the, the confidence that they needed and the, the, the kind of guts they needed to, to work so that we achieve specific goals that we had set for ourselves. The courage, because we, we thought, yeah, it, it's not a matter of thinking. We were then independent. We're not independent, and even today, we are not like absolutely independent in the, in the economy and in the politics, but we are relatively growing in terms of our independence, both economically, politically, as well as in our inner self, self-confidence. Self-esteem has been built and is growing in terms of what we, we've, how we value ourselves, our contribution. And it, it, this has been gradual, but you can see the seeds of independence. And this is, has been built by the, the nature of the education, despite its limitations, which I believe we are going to read there. Uh, and the, 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 the value that the government has to its people. There is the democracy. People feel that they, they participate in, in, in choosing their, their leaders. And even in the villages, democracy is there. Now they vote for, for their local leadership. And they feel this is our own. They have that kind of ownership. And that thinking, which is internal, gives the drive to what we do. Without that, we're not a nation. So in the education system, is also has also contributed so much in in other areas. We have a stronger military now. We have a stronger um, health system now, and it is increasing because, like I see, we are now encouraging entrepreneurship, which somehow died. People are waiting for the government to employ them. So them. Well, to do everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They, they, they were talking about free education re being reintroduced after the 19th, early, late 70s, and uh, particularly in the 80s and early 90s, where it was like, now you do it, we want to share. But we were sharing with the very rich and the very low, and the very low uh, income uh, households could not pay for their children. The very poor. Yes, yeah. The very, you know, they, they were not able to pay. Yes. But now they are back to school. So now everybody is coming in. There are challenges. We have to address them. But at least we're making a step. So enrollment has increased in the education system. And when that one grows, it means that all the other f sectors are in involved because they get products they need, who are educated, who have the skills. We might need to change the curriculum, but that is an another thing that we need to, to talk about. So you yeah. have a reason also to, to be... I'm celebrating. Yeah, I'm celebrating. <laughs> All right. Now, yeah. um, do I start with Joe, the media consultant, or I start with the political scientist? Um, <laughs> Either of us. Either okay. of us. Okay. <laughs> Let me start with the political scientist. I mean, uh, uh, well, you, you, you. If there is a justification for Tanzania to celebrate. Yes. Uh, 50 years of independence. 56. 56 years of independence, uh, independence of Tanganyika. Your question is very technical, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because because it's, it's talking about Tanzanians. Yes. And then it's talking about independence of Tanganyika. Yes. yes. Because so, there was Tanganyika first before Tanzania. Exactly. In other words, uh, people in Zanzibar, is it just fight for them? Uh, 56 years of independence of Tanganyika. Is there a justification? Tanzanian. I mean, Tanzanians as a whole. Uh, I think there is. Uh, there is uh, because uh, uh, I think as a, as a, as a country, we uh, historically, now we have a country. You know, uh, Before 1961, we, we didn't have a country. We had a colony. Uh, the colony is, 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 not a, is not a country. Did we really have a colony, Dr. Shangwe, or we had a... Trust. A, a United Nations trusteeship. trusteeship. 
But it's still administered falls. by the British. It's, it's but still, it's still a colony. Still falls in the colony. <laughs> no, Kenya language. was a colony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. It still okay. falls in. Uh, in <laughs> it's just a matter of in, t- in, t- the, in, the, in the colonial, yeah. colonial, colonial, <laughs> colonial <laughs> colonial <laughs> linguistic yeah. terms. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is a reason to celebrate because now we have uh, we have uh, as I said we have a country we have a nation, and uh, uh, the nation building project we have succeeded quite a lot. In, in a number of areas, we still have challenges. Uh, so, the in, to mark independence is, is symbolically it means it means breaking away from from domination, breaking away from from colonialism, and now we are presenting ourselves as a, as, a, as a people, and I think that's that's very very important. And uh, uh, for 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 all the to celebrate, uh, to, to mark. Uh, 50 years of independence of Sanganyika is is is, is, is even more uh, more relevant because uh, uh, it, we didn't have Tanzania, as I say. Tanzania came late, and uh, I think that's for me again symbolically was 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 very important because uh, as I said, we broke away from colonialism and we were redefining ourselves. Uh, so we were Tanzanians and then we became Tanzanians, and uh, probably I would suggest. I would like to see more fanfare. I'm not saying that we should not forget this history. It's very important history as far as, as we, are, uh, we are concerned. But I probably suggest that we see more fanfare uh, to mark the union of Tanganyika and Zanzibar. But the day will come on the 26th. I know. That's what I, I'm saying. We need to see more fanfare. Okay. Because that, that, that tells a lot. That's, that tells the history of the people who are trying to redefine themselves. Yes. Uh, territorially, you know. Uh, and uh, part of this was uh, part of the explanation was that uh, the union was a product of this pan Africanist thinking, you know. And one wishes that we go beyond Tanzania now. Now we're celebrating this uh, uh, being Tanzania, so yes. uh, but one wishes that we see more of Africans coming together and really find themselves beyond colonial borders, beyond. Uh, clusters, we exactly, clusters, which we are all small countries. Exactly, which we are all imposed. So it is important that still there's a there's a there's still room for for us to continue uh, redefining ourselves and, uh, and 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 being a people, being a people. We're still in the process. The nation building project, as I was saying, was uh, was successful in some other areas, but we still failed in some other areas. And now we probably there are signs of reversing. <laughs> Going backward in some aspects, so we really need to arrest uh, those setbacks and, and continue redefining ourselves as a people and move forward. Thank you, Dr. Shangwe. Um, Joe Mwamiyangi, what do you say to that uh, before I go to the next question? Yeah. Our independence is something to cherish, you know, we should cherish it because I remember. Um, I wasn't as old as he was. I was about two years old. True. Yeah. <laughs> so I was born in Tanganyika. Um, it's something that, that we should cherish. You know, we had very few, you know, Nyerere embarked on the program of Africanization. He used, you know, he, he had a program where he brought in some people, maybe from Malawi, from Ghana. That would help, you know, to make the, Tanzani- the, Tan- the few Tanzanians that were educated, you know, also learn from other experiences from other countries. You had, uh, you, you know, you had very few doc- We had very few doctors. Now we are even exporting doctors, nurses, and the like. Few engineers. You know, well, um, we have very few engineers. Even in the mining sector, we have written about a lot. You know, we we have exported uh, mining experts to other regions. Now they are heading very big corporations around the world from Tanzania. But this wasn't there during independence. And you know, the University of Dar es Salaam didn't have a mining faculty. Is less than 10 years old, 10 years old now. We used to train our mining engineers at the University of uh, Zambia, and they would bring their pharmacy degree uh, students here. But uh, you know, uh, when we embarked on this, like you said, the project of independence, there were things that we were looking at. You know, that we wanted to achieve our people to be educated. When you have educa- an educated mass, you have people that can question the government. You know, can hold their their leaders to account. Because they are educated, they, they, they can, you know, they can question how are you using our money, you know. Uh, so we've got somewhere, like uh, she was saying that 
we're not really independent when it comes to the economy because we are still tied to the, you know, the, the big powers. But uh, rest assured, there is no country in the world that's not attached to other economies. You know, even the, in, in the United States, if, they are, if the Chinese were to withdraw what they've invested in America, that economy would, uh, would suffer. But it's a level of dependence that we should be looking at. Is the level of the dependence on the foreign donors decreasing, or is it increasing, or has it stagnated? So we should be looking at ways of sustaining, you know, our, our budget. Yeah, our budget. How do we how do we um, finance our budget? Do we depend on donors? Do we look at internal revenue? How do we generate a revenue? That's where the, the human resource, uh, uh, human capital comes in. Have a human capital that will run the economy efficiently. Uh, generate income, then get the taxes, then we'll move forward. Yeah. So All it's right. something that we should cherish. Right. You know, we've come a long way. But we need to do. Yeah. You have the four. Four of you have um, have answered you, which, which was my, my second question. What is the country achieved in fifty six <laughs> years of independence? We've responded to that well. Let me move on to the third question. Um, at independence, uh, we had three basic enemies. Um, ignorance, disease, and poverty. In your view, have we succeeded in fighting against these and indeed eradicating the three enemies? Professor? To a certain uh, degree, I would say yes. Uh, we have not reached a place when uh, we can say we have eradicated uh, the three uh, problems. In terms of uh, ignorance, we have done quite a lot, uh, depending on how you, how you translate, how you interpret ignorance. Because sometimes we say somebody is ignorant because he has not gone to formal education. But somebody is very, you know, adept in, in his area or his, his locality. He knows everything. He has like his cows, he, you know, <coughs> they have their cows, they have their farms, they have everything. They're mm. actually independent. Mm. And they're saying they are poor. How do you def define this poverty? In, yeah. uh, they are uneducated. How do you define education? Mm. They are surviving. Mm -hmm. Only that we, we gouge our ignorance against a certain civilization which is not ours. Mm. And it's uh, against that background that we're having uh, caricatures, imitating the Western to the extent that I heard our uh, uh, the excellence, our president, talking about the dressing in music recently. That is imitating beyond. You become a caricature to the extent that you, you, you become more Western than the Western yeah, themselves. Yes. So, uh, so ignorant, we are not as ignorant, but uh, when you talk ignorance and we, we, we gouge it with Western civilization, we need to, to sit back and see what do we refer to as ignorant. We have made significant steps in terms of educating our people. Uh, we, are, we are behind in terms of localizing education. We are still depending on Western literature to a great extent and I think this is because of the priority that we have given to education which is quite low. We have not tasked our experts and enhanced their capacity and facilitated their innovativeness and creativity. So because of the funding but also the type of pedagogy that we are having, the type of methodology we are using in teaching. So we, we, are, we, we have made great strides, but we need to do more. Okay. Professor, while you are still on the floor, many the three of the parents will also respond to that. Um, are Tanzanians better off today than they were 56 years ago? Yes. I would say yes. We are better off. That's why I'm saying this is r relative. We have attained some steps. We, we are still lagging behind in some, but there is an opening. We can see that we can move now. Why? 
because our ind independence is increasing. Particularly today with um, Magufuli's approach to, to our, our future. He is so futuristic. He is tackling issues in economy, uh, not holistically in the sense that there are areas that will come, but at least he's focusing on areas that are very important, industrialization. Because we have a lot of products from our farmers, but they have to be processed in India, in, in Germany. We have our, our gemstone, we have our minerals, but we cannot process them. They are ours, yes, but we can't. So we need these industries. They started well during the early time uh, of our independence, and then somewhere they, 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 those who have colonized our brains came back in a different way. <laughs> uh, I would say they cheated us to a certain extent. Yeah, uh, okay. you know, she was talking about, yes. um, you know, you were two years old then. Yeah, yeah. but, but, but she, she, there is something she said about, you know, you go to the village, you find the fishermen. I come from Bear, and by the reef, by the, the village is just by the lake, lake. lake Nyasa. And there's, there, there, are two, there is a river, Songo. Kiwira, mm. and Songo on the other side. If you come from town, you go to canoe, how do you say you make it? it but the village, the villager there knows how to canoe, so he's better than you. Yeah. When you come to town, you, you sit on a computer, he doesn't know, so you are better on the computer, but it's better there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the other th yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is, you know, when, th when they measure the, you know, uh, the doctor here will help us, they say you, there are very few people that can survive on a dollar a day. Mm. You know, the calculations, I think, Money. they haven't um, uh, encompassed everything that's to do with the economy. Because if somebody has so many cows, he mix cows? them, you know, and you know, and you know, even even ten cows, he has ten goats, he has a uh, hundred, you know, banana plants, he has a uh, hundred cocoa trees. Like in my area in Yakusa land, there, there's cocoa. Now we grow a lot of cocoa, we export it. But with capturing the one dollar a day, I think the economists should, you know, go further and look at how many people are can survive on one dollar a day, you know? And dispute uh, that? Yeah, yeah. No, no, just maybe improve on what, whatever they tell us. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I think everybody here knows that we had one of the highest literacy rates in Africa yeah. in the 60s and 70s, yeah. you know? You're talking about education. Well, then somewhere we got lost. You know, there's, uh, the, 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 the government was maybe with good intentions. They, 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 let, they let people get into education, you know, private sector get into education. But when we made education a commodity, you know, there was a compromise on the quality. You know, that's why you find a lot of schools, you know, uh, the professor there, the doctor here, Mamnyange, Shangwe there, they would look at which school is getting more students to pass their exams, not what they are learning. Previously, you went to school so that you could learn, understand, not pass an exam. I'm not saying they shouldn't pass, but you have now a lot of people that are going through the, the syst a system that wants them to get very good grades. Yes. If you remember this, the uh, rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki, this American, he said that uh, this education, you know, he was talking about the American education, that is outdated. You know, you tell ch your children to go to college, get good grades. It's all, it's, all it's, it's past, it's, you know, it's because uh, children need an education that will make them even self-reliant. Is because you find most of the, the richest guys, in, they even they never finished college, you know, like the Bill Gates and the others. So we should have an education that in the UK. yeah, you should have an education that uh, you know uh, uh, takes into consideration all these aspects instead of just looking at edu education as a as as a commodity. The government should redefine how it provides education, and at times you know on an individual level. The government is even punishing parents. I take my son to a private school. If he finishes school, then he says, they can't give me a loan because he went to a private school. When I took the responsibility that should be done by the government, by education, my, my, my child, I'm punished. So, you know, these are some of the <laughs> little things they should be looking at. Why should you punish me? Talking about industrialization, you know, it's not that we never had any industries here, but the, 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 the people that are in power, uh, starting from the president, who is very enthusiastic about industrialization. We should look at the pitfalls that led to the collapse of Mortex, Beatex, 
you know, all these, you know, these, uh, so you know, the, 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 the one in the Dar es Salaam, you know, they all died. How did they die? It's because what we did was you take a party cadre to run this industry. When he fails, you transfer him somewhere else. No, you take him, jail him, so that the others understand. <laughs> so as we go forward, we are looking at the industrialization. The government should be very careful, you know, who it entrusts to run these industries. Whether I see the private sector, but they should know what, what the government wants. It's not that they should just do things in a vacuum. Let me oh. end there for now. I think uh, he was like <laughs> challenging the economists on how we... <laughs> no, no, no. I, th I think we, we, the economists uh, understand uh, the challenges in terms of measuring development. And uh, so they normally take, if you, 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 you take individual sectors as a, a, a measure, uh, for, for, for gauging whether country or people are, uh, are getting better or not. And uh, one of the, the key, the, the three enemies, for example, uh, is taken as core, uh, poverty. If you take poverty, it has different measures. But uh, one of the one, with the one which has actually made progress, which I think touches on the common man, is that on put food poverty as part of uh, the chronic poverty which uh, leads a, a household to survive or to afford only one meal per day, uh, for example, was one of the, the, the targets that in 2000 we had uh, uh, set a target that after 15 years we should have it. And I think for so, so far we have managed because it was around 19% out of 100 households, 19 actually, would only afford one meal. Now as we talk, uh, less than 10 households uh, uh, can't afford uh, w w um, can afford only one meal. So I think that that's a simple way of, of looking at, <laughs> at the way. But when it comes to, 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 to ignorance, I think Prof. Prof has said we have made some progress. Diseases we've taken, they normally measure in terms of child mortality and uh, maternal mortal mortality rates, uh, children and mothers who are pregnant when they're giving birth. Um, we have managed to half, actually, reduced by half death of children uh, uh, b uh, uh, below five years, uh, death of mothers uh, uh, giving birth, uh, slightly less than uh, uh, um, uh, half. Uh, and and the one of the challenges which has constrained us is the issue of uh, Tanzania actually is among the leading countries in terms of underage uh, uh, mothers. Uh, women be below, is it below 18 or below 20? Who, who the, the early, early, early pregnancy, I think, is, is one of the, the, the setbacks the country is, 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 is facing. But uh, generally, I think the, the UNDP is what they call Human Development Index, uh, which Tanzania, uh, since uh, like uh, the five years ago, four years ago, we also adopted to have a unique Human Development Index for Tanzania, which compares actually different regions and comes with a, a, a unique, uh, in the, the, the Human Development Index actually combines several at attributes, issue of uh, 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 health, uh, access to education, uh, access to water, uh, and of course the income, eh? and, 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 uh, and the other indicators. So, for, for so far, uh, the, 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 the index for Tanzania has been improving. At the, mo the, the last report shows that uh, on average it's 0 0.6, supposed to be one, the best. But now we are at our 0 0.6, and you have maybe half of the regions actually are below that, and you have uh, um, maybe th no th three quarters of the regions are, be are below that. A quarter of of, of the regions, uh, okay. We have how many regions? Do we have 28. Something like that. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe yeah. So, so, so <laughs> yeah. So maybe almost half, almost half of the regions are, are above that above the, the, the national average in terms, in, in the, I was mentioning uh, the, the Southern Highland regions, uh, Arusha, Kilimanjaro, of course, and, 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 and the Mwanza, uh, after removing Gaita from Mwanza region, Mwanza actually shot up 
because now you because of the income of, of the Mwanza uh, city, oh, eh? it, 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 it comes up. So, so generally, I think as 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 as, as a nation, yes, we, we realize that that we, we have to use other other measures, and the the, the income, uh, the dollar uh, income only is not it's, it's not enough. I think economists uh, realize oh, that. Okay, for, okay, Doctor Nagero, um, Doctor Shangwe. Do you want to react to this? Uh, Tanzanians better today than they were before. Yeah, I, I want just to, to to add that we have uh, we have made progress uh, in the fight against these three enemies. Yes. Uh, but also, she was talking about uh, uh, the need to localize knowledge. For example, in talk of ignorance, and I think she was very elaborate in, in her. Uh, uh, answer that we needed to for example I was reading somewhere and, and uh, they were talking about the need to develop new indicators and I heard that you <laughs> already did that mm -hmm. but probably there's a need to yeah do yes that. economic and social research foundation ESRF is, yeah. has that project of yeah. nice. coming and, and there's, a, mm. there's an, a, an example that someone put forward that uh, how can a homeless person in America one who lives on uh, handouts government handouts mm. Uh, and then you have a villager in, in Shinyanga, probably, who has a piece of land mm -hmm. and his own hut, like he calls it a house. And a few cows. Mm -hmm. And a few cows. But probably in our economic indicators, maybe this person is poorer than, than the yeah. one who is homeless, who lives on government handout. So the, the, the if, if, you, if you just use the income, if you just you use the income it. indicator, exactly. uh, then for sure the American homeless, will be because his, 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 his handout is higher than yeah. the, the income yeah. earned by the school. <laughs> 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 it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> it make okay. Sense. Well, uh, uh, look, um, Shangu again, very quickly. Uh, have we managed to, ma to maintain peace and unity among Tanzanians very quickly? We are were, we were left with 10 minutes. Ye yes and no. <laughs> yes, because we live... Uh, uh, luckily, if you compare ourselves with our neighbors, probably, in other countries, DRC, very troubled uh, place. Uh, so we don't have that level of civil unrest and, and, and conflicts, or, uh, warfare among groups of people within the country. So we are we are peaceful in that sense, but I think uh, peace and unity goes beyond uh, beyond that. Uh, how safe are we uh, in our homes? Uh, how safe are uh, women and children, for example, when they walk in the streets of Dar es Salaam at midnight, for example? Are they safe? Can you walk uh, uh, in carrier call with your iPhone, texting uh, in the midnight, and, and feel free about it and what happens to you when you do that? And if, if, if nothing happens, then we are peaceful. All right. You okay. know? <laughs> okay. Now, the, in the next 10 minutes, what, uh, what, what should we address here? Um, I think, okay, one minute each before we go to conclusion. Do you share the President McFully's view that the country has achieved more in 56 years than during the colonial rule? Quickly. That's obvious. <laughs> you know, she talked, she talked about infrastructure. Yeah. You know, you, you can travel from here to Mutwara and end up in Songea. You know, you can travel from there going to Dodoma and not go through Morogoro. Mm -hmm. You know, these roads have just come up, uh, not during the colonial era. I, uh, when I traveled from Dar es Salaam to Kiela in the past, oh, it took, took two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it takes a day. Even if, if there was no cameras with the traffic, <laughs> it's even, it's even much, you know, you get home much earlier in the village. Mm -hmm. right. okay. So, <laughs> so very obvious. Dr. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, uh, I think one of the areas which we we tend to ignore in terms of mentioning what are the attributes which has contributed. Uh, to this uh, nation building project in the nation of cohesion, which is so critical mm -hmm. because even economists, they, some, most of the publications, they say it's normally ignored. For us economists, we only look at the GDP figures, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. We forgot about the dynamics, the, 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 the social dynamics going on, holding people together, mm -hmm. uh, having peace. Mm -hmm. I think one of the projects which Mwalimu uh, Nyerere undertook immediately we got independence was that actually addressing uh, access to social services and education among the marginalized, previously marginalized communities and the 
marginalized uh, tribal or, um, or Co uh, religious group groups. Language, so well. Yes, and of, of course, exactly. Kiswahili is a common language. But actually, he, he, he had to, to make sure that uh, some uh, the Muslims, for example, the, the, the colo during the colonial times, uh, Muslim parents were shunned away from taking children to Christian school. So he nationalized those schools so that each one will, uh, will have access now with respect of religion. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the success areas. Um, but also the tribes. I remember um, the, 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 there are some small tribes in Singida. Uh, the, 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 the Hazabe, for example. Mm -hmm. They were marginalized. The Maasai were, were marginalized. So now it's that project of bringing education to those tribes um, it's, it's one of the, 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 the success areas. And, and I think uh, with the Magufuli bring uh, free primary education, pre free secondary education, in, in highly subsidized secondary education, actually it's going to reach out to more of, the, of those. And I think it's an important attribute actually to nation building, building a, co a united nation, a united country. Okay. Um, uh, professor, rather than us answer the same question, let's start with you and then we'll go this way. It's okay. All right. All said by you, notwithstanding, are there challenges uh, or is there any challenge in terms of development which this country may face beyond 56 years? Very good. Yeah, plenty. So there we have, uh, we call, I would call them enemies rather than just challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, technology is one of them. It is helping us, but that technology is not ours. Uh, and uh, innovative thinking, creativity, is not inbuilt in our curriculum. So we need to revisit our curriculum. So that we move from rote memorization, where we look at examination results in terms of statistics. Mm -hmm. I think the other time I also talked about this. Yes. We don't look at, uh, statistics are okay, that we're getting 100% passing, but what do they go out with yeah. to their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the education they get mm -hmm. in, in, in engaging them in, in, in employment, employing themselves. We are not that yet, that there yet. So we need pedagogy improvement, therefore we need to improve our teachers. Very quickly. Exactly, I think we need to do a lot when it comes to education and I think we already talked about it. Uh, but I want to go further because uh, you can have a future. A few minutes, Dr. Shah. Okay, we, we won't have a future if you don't have peace and, and, and unity. It's not social cohesion. Mm. You talk about education and economics, but if you don't have that, yes. then you have a problem. So, uh, one of the challenges we face now, because when we talk of unity, we're talking of diversity, means you acknowledge that there's diversity. Yeah. Now, unity needs to bring diverse groups together, and then you move forward. Right. How do we deal with people who are, have different opinions, for example, from ours? Do we treat them as, uh, enemies. Enemies. as enemies of the state or enemies of the Tanzanian society? Or you are enemy? That's the, I think that's, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> one of the biggest challenges that we face and we need to, to, to address that. Okay. Very quick, I'm, I'm being the forced other to close up. The other challenge, even though it's, it's, it's being worked on, is financial inclusion. So many Tanzanians were marginalized from the financial sector. But I'm happy, with the, the last report I think doctor was there, showed that so many Tanzanians are now are included. And the other thing is education. I think we need to look at our education system and see where it takes us in the industrialization exercise. Because there will be no industrialization without an effective education system. We are, we are not unique. Without every other country has a problem with the education system. Yeah. People might not know this, but yeah. every other country, they have a social shortage, shortage of teachers. The same things that we face, but it's up to us to work on these things so, so that in the next 50 years or so, we become a stronger, a country that could even, you know, loan other countries money. I, I, I think for me, uh, Shangwe, I thought he would say that uh, institutionalizing this uh, project of creating clean leadership among our political parties, mm -hmm. all political parties. If we had one code of conduct that all political parties must generate clean ethical leaders then this agenda Magufuli is taking, uh, rooting out corruption will succeed, will be long lasting. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Katushot, I was actually being warned that we have to wind up because there must be something else coming up. I thank you very much for your contribution uh, in terms of where we were, where we are, and where we, we are going, or where we will be uh, beyond 56 in terms of uh, 
anniversary, um, uh, first anniversary of independence of Tanganyika. Thank you very much, Tanganyika then, but now Tanzania. But of course, history, you, you can't erase history. Mm -hmm. um, 19, 1961, it was Tanganyika, and mm -hmm. I remember I was a big boy. I was actually doing practical work as a journalist. You were two years I was older. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we thank God where we are. And let's hope uh, God will also bless this country to go beyond uh, 56 years, and particularly with this, as I said, uh, uh, agenda of the Fifth Faith Administration. Viewers, you had the views of my panelists here. We've been celebrating 56 years of independence of Tanganyika and Tanzania, of course, later they, they are thereafter. And the biggest occasion was in the Doma, the capital, where President Magufuli inspected a military parade after 21 gun salutes. He then spoke to all Tanzanians and said, this country has done tremendous progress in development since independence. He, he, did, uh, he, he cited development in social sector, health infrastructure, water, education, as the areas where we have made tremendous progress. And you heard this from my panelists here. However, the war against the three enemies at independence, ignorance, disease, and poverty, uh, to some extent, as you also heard from my policy, are still a challenge, are still with us, but we will eventually win the war against them. President McFoley pardoned well over 8,157 prisoners and 61 in the death row. Hence, Tanzanians were just right to celebrate the 56 years with the industrialization goal, as we heard from our panelists here, and the efforts of the Fifth Faith Administration, this country will have made greater achievements beyond the 56 years. Let us all work harder to contribute to the development of our country for the next 56 years and beyond. This is all we have for you today. Until next Sunday at the same time, and on Thursday at 15 hours for the repeat program. And we have my panel. Joseph Mumyange, Dr. Bohel Nekelo, Professor Nurata Mushi, Dr. Mohamed Shangwe, and my TBC Television Center crew. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye.